This conference will now be recorded. Welcome to Dr. TSPR show. This is Dr. Tangella Shiva Prasad Reddy alias Dr. TSPR. Namaste, Adab, hello, and a warm welcome in the form of welcome to all my wonderful guests from Tamil Nadu. Believe me, they are the best when it comes to legal aspects and the legalities involving finances. Legalities involving finances because it is your fortune. You work very hard. It is not lottery. But is this being made a lottery for those illegalities? I say yes. Why I say yes? You will come to know from our esteemed honored guests. Let me just give you a brief introduction because crypto is always hidden. The hidden agenda. We have Mr. V. Rajendran. You, will, you all know him and you will love to hear from him as and when people wanted a call from me. He was ready. Even when he was traveling, unfortunately, from Hyderabad to Chennai, came to visit his son. Sir, I said cryptocurrency we need. He was ready with the show. In November itself, sensing what is happening, why this crypto hidden currency? When it is hidden, how can it become a tender currency? How can it have that value? And how can it be legally related? To your hard earnings so we have come out we have shown you what cryptocurrency is all about and how why and why the world is eulogizing it and how it has come into force and what is the technology we said blockchain technology on which this has been surviving or thriving we have brought out all such things now unfortunately instead of coming out with a proper bill with a proper discussion on the floor of parliament and all legislative assemblies our finance minister suddenly till that time we were expecting after our show they will present the government's view to the supreme court because the case is still hanging there i think let me uh, let my legal luminaries correct me the case is still hanging there government has to file an affidavit and you, you know you have seen even the karnataka chief minister's name Likewise, many other politicians' name is being doing rounds in the cryptocurrencies. It was a big exposure. This is another thing that hijab controversy started under the same chief ministership in Karnataka. But the Karnataka chief minister's name, that means the ruling fraternities were not spared in this. So we thought government will come out clean in a transparent and accountable way, file an affidavit with the Supreme Court discuss it on the floor of parliament before they make any clear judgment because this i am stating because the minister of state on record he says once we have we said 30 percent slab is there for cryptocurrency that means government has accepted that really bog it's a mind-boggling issue how can that be the bill is yet to be passed they could not discuss it on the floor of the parliament or assemblies all political parties have to take this blame. Government is yet to file an affidavit in the Supreme Court. The case is still hanging there with fire. So many ruling fraternity names were being involved and the names they are being mentioned in the media. And all of a sudden, 30% slab for cryptocurrency. And again, they say government will come up with a digital currency on its own. When government is planning to come up with a digital currency, why the hell you need? 30% slab for cryptocurrency. Big question mark. Why government, central government did not file a petition in the Supreme Court? The case is still hanging. Why Supreme Court could not expedite this? Because it is the fortune of people, hard earned money. It is stashed away to the foreign that we have seen that black money. Now, after this government came forth from 1976, no one can have an access to the black money or NRI money coming into the political parties' accounts. Believe me, this is nonsense. And even we have no right to inquire which 
company or which corporate company is financing the political party because all the electoral bonds have become opaque all political parties came together to this very nonsensical things at the backdrop of this is this going to help again black money now in a different way instead of stashing away funds in the banks foreign banks swiss banks now is it going to be cryptocurrency then what about the people who are making toiling very hard to make eke out their living and trying to save on the verge of banks being merged to overcome non performance assets helping those corporates again common man is being taxed at that bloody sibil who says if you miss one emi that bloody sibil the bank has no job to pass on responsibility to pass on our information because we are in agreement with the bank the bank passes the information to credit information bureau india limited that bloody company and that fellow he says this fellow is so and so this track record is wrong this bloody sibil and this hell lot of banks will be made to answer because how come there were corporate companies went scot free they became broke they go for public issues and if they float another company the same banking banks again fund them what is this nonsense happening but such is the case instead of coming to the rescue of commoner during this pandemic times the central government passes a budget wherein it is all crypto this budget is crypto because you are trying to stash away the hard earned money of the people in india unlike other countries every citizen is a born constitution authority we pay taxes with which right from central to state governments run right from prime minister to chief minister they are all our public servants so clear this what is happening with this new law why this 30% tax on cryptocurrency which the central government did not file an affidavit in the supreme court for the supreme court to decide or to come out with a judgment and what is this new digital currency which government is going to bring when such is the case why this cryptocurrency being legalized in india the karnataka chief minister's name was heard loud and clear yes mr v rajendra ji we have some wonderful people in you and we have mr logesh babu he is a practicing cyber law advocate and full of knowledge he will speak on technology perspectives and all that and we we have sn ravi chandran who is adored a lot who is revered a lot because he is going to present the impact of cryptocurrencies and dcs digital currency to in the national economic ecosystem and the crime scenario because he has authored many books on that mr v rajendran will explain everything mr rajendran ji go ahead i will make you the presenter to thank you dr reddy am i audible is your voice audible can i go ahead yes please go ahead i think mr ravi chandran ji should you should he should connect i think there is some problem maybe he will come back yeah okay okay now uh, uh, thank you dr reddy for the wonderful opportunity given to me it's really very nice to share my experiences with you um i am not going straight to my presentation let it take some time let me just spend the first few minutes on the role we are expected today and the talk how is going to proceed today thank you dr reddy for the wonderful opportunity now uh, cryptocurrency this is becoming a hot topic these days for the past uh, um few months rather a few weeks i would say there have been a lot of talks that uh, cryptocurrency crypto transactions they itself should be banned there was a particular case for crypto in fact the word crypto or cryptography oh, or yeah. the government to keep others, others can you just others can you just yeah, uh, yeah. let you talk about Ravi Chandra ji, your voice is being heard. Your voice is being heard. You can just uh, mute yourself. Well, present, yeah, right, right. There was an audio disturbance. Okay. Now, the word crypto by itself is not new, particularly in the Indian epics and the Indian 
a literature scenario. It will be quite surprising if we say that uh, the cryptography and how the crypto should be used has been discussed uh, uh, from the uh, administrative treaties, the omnipresent and uh, omniscient Kautilya Sattashastra. It will be quite surprising when you say it, written around 350 years before Christ. Uh, Chanakya has written in his uh, much acclaimed uh, administrative treaties, Arthashastra, that when a ruler sends a communication to another ruler, to another minister, or from one minister to another minister, or one king, emperor to another king, like that, when a public a carrier tra takes that message, that message should go in such a way that even if the public carrier, say a person going in a horse or elephant or by foot or something like that, even if the public carrier reads that message, you should not be able to understand. The message should be understood only by the person to whom it is intended. This, in fact, it is exact practical application now what WhatsApp calls end-to-end -end encrypted. WhatsApp calls it end-to-end -end encrypted. We all say it's, oh, it's a wonderful thing that WhatsApp, uh, my message in WhatsApp does not go uh, as a plain text to whoever is, even by chance if somebody is able to read my message they won't be able to understand it because the whole thing is encrypted encryption is a is something quite new everything goes in a, a crypto fashion cryptography what i'm trying to tell you is that the crypto fashion or cryptography by itself per se is not new this has been discussed in many ancient indian epics like mahabharata ramayana kautilya Sartashastra, and many other subsequent in tamil literature and sangha sangha literature in many other things but in a democracy there are different angles to you angles to a crypto currency we in digital security association of india for which currently i happen to be the chairman have addressed the seminars and conferences because we focus particularly on the um, you know, digital security scenario and digital privacy scenario in the country particularly uh, addressing uh, people conferences and meeting on the uh, cyber crimes it laws so when you speak about cyber crimes and it law the privacy and crypto they are inseparable cousins when you talk about privacy you have to talk about crypto we necessarily have to talk about the crime scenario because the privacy of one person when infringed it becomes a public data then that becomes a cyber crime that becomes a digital offense and the government comes to it but suppose when the government itself wants to intercept a message there should be a legally permitted way channel to do it that is what of course our information technology act information technology amendment act uh, 2008 in section 69 16 and b and 70 they speak about i mean we will not be discussing all those things right now today so our point of discussion today as a chairman of uh, a digital security association of india i have with me in my team in the team of panel discussion mr mj logesh babu logesh babu can you see you on the screen i have with me mj logesh babu who is uh, the joint secretary of uh, a digital security association of india and a very renowned uh, advocate particularly in the area of uh, cyber crimes and it law he, he is the zonal head of Asian School of Cyber Law and also the CEO of his own company, Postkey Private Limited, in which he focuses on the digital crimes, particularly against women, how to empower the women and guard them against digital crimes and crime in social networking sites. He's a very tech savvy techno expert. He'll be talking more on technology, less on law, because I'll be focusing a little more on law. Then I have the other panelist with me is uh, Mr. S. N. Ravichandran from Coimbatore. Ms. Ravi, are you there? Uh, can I see you on the screen? Okay. I'm sharing so, the camera. Click on the camera, Mr. Lokesh Babu and Mr. Ravichandran ji. Share your yeah, camera. Yeah, yeah. Well, please share the camera. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm sharing my screen, sir. Okay, good, good. Very good. Wonderful. Yeah, give a introduction of Ravi Chandran. Very good. Now Ravi Chandran. Ravi Chandran. Quite interesting. No, interesting to note that he is not basically a, a qualified information security professional or a qualified advocate. 
but he is an experienced person in cyber crime investigation because many advocates in tamil nadu many police officials a top level ips officials they have approached him for cyber crime investigation to look into the techno legal angle technology angle as well as the legal angle in many cyber crimes he has addressed various uh, um, conferences and seminars in chennai bangalore in gujarat in delhi cii fiki and particularly in the police academy in tamil nadu pandicherry paimuthur and many other places i mean including the economic offenses wing and the cbi and other uh, arms of the central government uh, i mean centers uh, um, uh, crime investigation agencies he comes with a very rich experience in in cyber crime investigation has spread over two to two and a half decades so i'm very happy that uh, mr ravichandran and uh, mr kodi prabhu have joined me you know about seven to eight minutes from now i'll be taking you through uh, is my uh, presentation uh, uh, can you see my presentation now yeah we are, it is there on your screen and you can make it full screen meanwhile uh, i think ravichandran ji your uh, audio yeah can you just mute your audio ravichandran ji lokesh babu sir you need to share your uh, both of you yeah lokesh babu garu i think i is sharing yeah. this I, i don't know why my, why my video is not sharing by but my audio is getting shared but my video is not sharing i don't trying for a long time <laughs> okay okay i'll yes. just see that yeah i think okay. there you should go to this share screen go to the camera and click share yeah, yeah i just yeah yeah i just uh, click my scratch share screen only but i could not share my video i don't know why i'm trying for a long time from the beginning i'm trying yes okay meanwhile if you want uh, you can rejoin otherwise we'll just see in the course of the discussion yes 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 sir i'll try, I'll, try, I, I'll i'll keep my thing updated sir you please proceed yes change my screen getting shared now you are able to see my screen now yes sir You can yeah, yeah, yeah. Your screen is very good, sir. Yes. Okay. Fine. Okay. Now, the as I was telling you, cryptography by itself is not new in India. We have uh, one second. Let me try to uh, expand the screen now. Okay. Ah. You you have to switch on your audio, Rajendran ji. not rest of us not only rajendran ji you switch off uh, switch on your audio and speak okay okay uh, uh, um, i think my hand by mistake it has gone there is it okay now is it okay it's okay only you should be able to because your voice should go clearly we are all yeah, yeah. Okay. muted please go ahead sir. okay 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 so when i speak about cryptography There is nothing new in cryptography because already we had a lot of seminars and this thing. But cryptocurrency is something very interesting, very intriguing, but quite interesting. As the word crypto itself suggests, many people do not know it. Basically, we all know how a share transaction works because a share does not have any value like a gold or silver or something. The value of a share or a script or whatever it depends upon the buyer and seller market. market potential that's all whatever is the market potential that the particular script has got the share value goes similarly a cryptocurrency also has a volatile value what is valued at 22 lakhs today may be valued at 23 lakhs what is valued about 30 lakhs it may come down to 20 may come down to 35 in a matter of few days it is so highly volatile that if you look at a crypto bitcoin screen uh, screen for about 2 3 minutes the speed at which the value fluctuates not in rupees in thousands of rupees over a few seconds anybody with a weak heart is certainly prone to get a heart attack so if anybody has a weak heart of uh, uh, looking at how their money keeps increasing and losing its value i would suggest don't look at the uh, bitcoin screen it is so volatile the other thing being the bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency for that matter is completely unregulated not issued by any particular country like a us dollar or a french franc or a hong kong dollar or a singapore dollar or a british pound or our own indian rupee not issued by any particular country so no country can regulate it if a person says that i lost money in cryptocurrency the only thing 
he can do is that keep quiet, keep his mouth shut, uh, perhaps uh, pray that nothing more uh, of loss should uh, occur to him in future. That's all. I don't think there is any official legal redress forum for those losing money in cryptocurrency because it's not regulated. But of course, uh, if it is a result of some transactions, the transactions non payment can be proved and that can go to the relevant court. That's all a very cumbersome process because particularly when the cryptocurrency is being traded only for illegal purposes for drug trafficking arms peddling and trade traffic and particularly ransomware like black money and uh, uh, threatening people like a ransom money like that so people never go to court if they lose money so this is another interesting thing about cryptocurrency so rbi has been talking about cryptocurrency rbi has said that it is something very bad for the economy people will all know there was a ministerial committee which said that cryptocurrency is bad though the underlying technology called the uh, blockchain technology is good blockchain is basically something like an operating system we have an operating system on which your ms office sits or powerpoint presentation ms office which is a suit of uh, uh, products like um, powerpoint presentation or excel or word anything sits and you have adobe or you have different kind of uh, of browsers everything sits on operating system like that blockchain is a technology it's something like an operating system on which sits trades like bitcoin ethereum and other things so the the underlying technology is good ministry also said but they said that cryptocurrency since it's not regulated unmonitored is bad for the economy based on this rbi issued a circular on april 6 2018 stating asking the banks not to deal with cryptocurrency however the internet mobile association of india they went to the court because there were uh, parties uh, there were many players who took uh, advantage who were benefited by the cryptocurrencies i do not know uh, what made them take such an urgent uh, emergent step like uh, uh, seeking a ban on the circular and unfortunately they also succeeded so supreme court in its historical verdict given in march 2020 stay used a very um, uh, intelligent word like the circular issued by rbi is a disproportionate measure so it actually uh, set aside the circular so the setting aside circular was taken as a um, green signal by those players they said that, okay cryptocurrency banning circular has been set aside so cryptocurrency is now permitted we call we all can do left right and center trade in cryptocurrency it went on for about two years after it uh, uh, march 2020 uh, supreme court word it came now for reasons not well known to the common man reserve bank of india and the finance ministry the two most interested stakeholders who wanted a ban legitimately understandably so they did not go on an appeal they never went on an appeal against the circular but though they had all these three options they could have taken a or they could have gone an appeal or they could have simply given an amendment for the it act stating that a digital record does not apply to the cryptocurrency this is a simple amendment they could have come out with which also the law ministry or the um, government did not do because already it act digital record does not apply to will or uh, a negotiable instruments or a testament like this. there are already three or four exceptions they could have simply added one more exception there stating cryptocurrency is also an exception so it does not have any digital record recognition they didn't do it so it was taken as a green signal now to add to all these things in the union budget now it took a very interesting turn the central bank digital currency is going to be introduced it was a landmark announcement made by the finance minister and the prime minister also said that it will be risk free and secure rbi is going to back it up like fine when it's going to be a regulated money from rbi absolutely fine understandable but how the press reacted to it press particularly those who had who have who may have who are bound to have their financial interests in this digital currency they were jubilant they said that oh digital currency yes uh, is in being indirectly legitimized though finance minister very cleverly said that she is not recognizing digital currency they only said cryptocurrency as a digital asset is going to be taxed at 30 percent now the larger question is when you tax something does it mean that you are legally recognizing it 
even the illegal money money got by illegal means the black money or money stolen they are also taxable strictly from the point of view of uh, the income tax regulations so just because the government is taxing something does not mean that the government is approving the way how the money was acquired illegal money bribe money also uh, is taxable as per the income tax uh, regulations but in this particular case a, a currency which was not recognized is suddenly comes to the budget domain and fm speaks about it everybody speaks about it there is going to be 30 percent tax plus one percent tds and everything is going to be there so naturally the industry will take it that it's an indirect recognition given to them which is not now rb also has said that we are going to issue a digital currency like the fiat currency fiat currency means whatever the currency it should be the government like us has issued us dollar government of india i mean the rbi here singapore dollar any official currency given by the government uh, which is not backed by the gold or silver is called a fiat currency now rbi has said that we are going to issue our own digital currency so that we encourage people who want to deal with cryptocurrency so it gives indirectly a similar the comparison of a cryptocurrency and the proposed digital currency of rbi in my opinion in the opinion of many others who agree with me a digital currency which is going to be issued by rbi is not going to be a cryptocurrency cryptocurrency recognition still has not come but uh, people press particularly is coming with a very misplaced misguided statement digital currency will also lead to more efficient cheaper currency management everything people are talking about okay all these things are coming so crypto industry has now celebrated the moment crypto industry celebrate the moment celebrates it stating that government has given legal recognition to it which is not true now experts like me and uh, experts like now vijay shankar and many others also they have raised all these questions these questions are left unanswered or vaguely answered or incorrectly addressed i would say government has taxing does it taxing amount to a form of legitimizing no the answer is very clear no will the digital currency be issued at will if it's digital currency is a fixed cost no premium when there is no premium how does the government say that it is going to give a boost to the people who want to trade on cryptocurrency like a share market or anything else when the value is not going to be volatile when the value is not going to be flexible like a demand and supply kind of a theory how does the government feel that it is going to be welcomed by those who want to trade in it so tax digital currency export it says digital currency export it cannot set it up with others these are the other issues so basically the from a national economy point of view a digital currency and the proposed i mean uh, private cryptocurrencies and the proposed digital currency they are not exactly same they have some fundamental basic differences i expect much more from the uh, finance department finance ministry finance secretary and uh, legal experts techno legal experts across the nation to answer all these points like uh, in the case of a private cryptocurrency the owner is not known it is unregulated it is value highly volatile whereas in the case of digital currency the owner is known rb is going to rb is going to monitor it the entire balance is going to be it is going to be completely kyc compliant how do you compare both so what the nation looks up to it uh, possibly in the next few minutes what my colleague uh, uh, logesh babu and ravi chandran who would like to share their experience we'll be taking more of these points in the debate uh, thank you thank you dr reddy for the opportunity now uh, am i audible can i continue dr reddy yes, sir okay now uh, can i take this opportunity uh, to invite logesh babu to present his views on the uh, uh, technology aspects of uh, uh, digital currency and cryptocurrency. Yes, yes, please. Lokesh Babu, Lokesh Babu please. are you there? Yes. Good evening to one and all. Thank you for the nice presentation and option given to me. Thanks, special thanks to the doctor and Mr. Rajendran. Yes. Say, thinking over of cryptocurrency in India is still a myth, right? See, but it has to be implemented from my point of view. The world is going to use cryptocurrency in the near future. In the very few, very uh, past of the money value, 
we started the money as with the bata system later uh, chinese introduced paper currency and later on uh, fiat currency came into existence and the development of this technology of internet and other things made money into various concepts like very of value, storing the value of money in debit cards storage cards credit card net banking all transaction came into existence now we are in the topmost level of using cryptocurrencies cryptocurrencies are virtual currencies which has to be used very previously cryptocurrency was banned in india later they said you can either use government will not interfere and now what has happened is countries like el salvador are authorized to this Bit bitcoin as, as, a, as their own national currency and now it became a foreign currency for us so we are forced to use this currency as a foreign currency only so you cannot uh, by giving any null reasons but still using cryptocurrencies will be a question mark for the person who finds it for legal issues we have to make this thing into regulated one a few cryptocurrencies must be allowed with the regulated one where the tax has to be implemented it has to be known the government has to watch all these things and only then the cryptocurrency should be used without this without approving these things if people started using cryptocurrency then it is going to end up in a mess because lots of uh, black markets and black currencies will be available in cryptocurrencies where we cannot trace so putting things in much more clear terms once a person started using cryptocurrencies their wallet can be hackable first point they are not going to use any coins that is the hard, hard cash or currencies where you can touch and feel only the public and private key which which is allowed in the app is going to be the private currencies that is their own cryptocurrencies where no one can interfere that they no one can watch that what exactly the amount is holding what exactly the transaction being made nothing can be monitored if government brings some Uh, regulations to monitor these things and get into control then uh, using cryptocurrency should not be a difficult one but uh, our government is working on that uh, let us uh, think that should end in a better way nothing else sir thank you but lokesh babu ji have received just from yes, sir. Uh, top most doctor fraternity these yes. are also means of controlling people you can be debarred from using your own money your own hard earned money the fortune the day government yes. find you are not following their mandates it says it is dangerous as you yes. are witnessing corona pandemic because you don't have yes. you will not have any physical money you will become you will be enslaved you, you, you will not have any physical money you can create the money in the cryptocurrency that is you can mine the money in cryptocurrencies you can generate their own money because the uh, that ends up with the normal mathematical calculation or the algorithm calculations where mining can start take place then the, uh, the money will get increased that is how the cryptocurrency value increases daily so it is very dangerous because as as this is being from aims all india institute of medical yes. sciences doctors they formed a group yes. and they're watching our live show and they're they're asking you this question what yes, will okay. you do now pandemic they have created a fear psychosis for a disease which yep. has got 99.9% cure without any treatment now for 2 years they have enslaved you they have not given you yes. any correct information even supreme court yep. high court they are simply stating you 50000 for corona deaths but they have not probed autopsy or post mortem reports underlying causes comorbidities without which they have allowed insurance companies and pharmacies to go scot free because yep. all the people all the governments have insured people If I if someone is dying with tuberculosis or malaria, these insurance companies would should have paid him four lakhs or five lakhs per individual. Instead, yes, government is not providing information. Courts are not understanding, not breaking a trial properly. They are making our hard-earned money to be paid to innocent, uh, uh, unfortunate people who have lost their lives instead of insurance companies. At the same stroke, pharmacy once you get hospitalized, they should come to the rescue of the petitioner. I mean. Uh, the diseased the affected person yes charge not till he dies both pharmacy and insurance companies now have gone scot free because of government and courts not handling it properly and not only that our own hard earned money is invested to make manuf manufacture vaccines for a disease which has got 99.9% cure without any treatment and these vaccines are no, being given under yeah, yeah, yeah. authorization till today no yeah, liability and compensation yeah. so one second sir I'm, 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 With, they are they are being given without liability and compensation the same thing it is our fortune 
when the health has already been taken for ride enslaved then our hard earned money our fortune we toil hard to make money to invest in banks or we have physical money but what is tomorrow what tomorrow yes mr logesh what what tomorrow what 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 tomorrow in the sense we have to emphasize the government the government is the regulatory authority where they should bring out some necessary steps to uh, put it the, the procedure in a formal way see for example as you said 99.9% we don't know how the person dies till the insurance company does not give anything the government pays everything is, is all correct when our topic is the uh, related with cryptocurrency cryptocurrency is more or less like a corona we don't know how that takes place who is the controller of the money how is going to be transacted everything still we have to face this cryptocurrency issue and we have to use it so government has to take the proper procedure of implementing rules and regulations for cryptocurrency and make public more clear see the the main problem in this is we know what is cryptocurrency lots of brokers and mediators say that we'll you invest money on this you we buy cryptocurrency we make huge money of that and we return and nothing happens the the ultimate people the where the heart and money the money which has been struggled and pained and earned, earned by me has been given to the person or the mediator who does not know anything about cryptocurrency just for trading the purpose of cryptocurrency they, they do business and they make it as a loss this comes up only after few days or few weeks or few months later on the people fee, if, if go for the goes for the complaint and i gave the money so to so and so then he has been cheated me the all these things happen government should keep all these things into mind and make us very clear what exactly the money is the most interesting fact about about money is in apart from our country many of the countries has does not have the option of saying i year by state uh, that is i year by um a promise to pay the bearer the sum of rupees so and so i don't find this current condition in anywhere of the uh, other countries notes see this things also we don't we does not know what exactly means i don't blame but still the meaning of this concept is when i take 100 rupees and give it to the governor of the rbi and he may give the real coins of of indian rupees that is what it means that word legal tender has to be emphasized in cryptocurrency the same thing happens the cryptocurrency can be stored can be utilized but we cannot feel where exactly the money is this is what the cryptocurrency is as you clearly said it is more or less like a corona corona virus only we don't know how the how the cryptocurrency started but Thank spreading you. all over the globe very fastly when compared to other diseases wonderful stay with because us sir yes, very wonderful, wonderful. you should come out with crime yeah. aspects okay Uh, yes sir thank you rajesh babu very wonderful statement that uh, cryptocurrency can be compared with corona now we have three c now corona cryptocurrency uh, i think for this yes. point this very good uh, the father for thought for ravichandran he will certainly uh, take this to the next level of uh, corona cyber crime cryptocurrency he had two more uh, c to it cyber crime he will make it totally 5 c yeah over to you ravichandran logesh babu ji don't go away you can mute yourself yeah yeah i am here i am here i am here i am here yeah ravi uh, thank you thank you mr rajendran and thank you dr shiva prasad reddy for having me on your show uh it is a privilege to be talking here uh let me start out by saying that technology for the sake of technology and innovation without forethought is dangerous what one man conceives another man can and will hack and the more corrupt the state the more numerous are the laws having said that let me give a brief idea about what currency everybody talks about currency money what is money what is currency initially we started out with kauri shells cocoa beans metals in in fact the word cash is derived from the word kas the first coin was uh, minted by the cheran maharajas uh, about 2000 years back it went to rome went to france went to england and came back as cash to india now we have traveled a long distance on that and with the advent of the internet and the spread of the mobile devices several possibilities have uh, come up which will stand the concept of currency on its head and assuring new ways of thinking about the ways that we are uh, interacting the underlying thing in all this is the truth 
trust. Trust is the linchpin on which human well-being survives. If trust is eliminated or removed, then any human interaction, then the global order will be in danger. The survival of the human uh, civilization will be at stake. Now, crypto tokens. I don't use the word currency because I don't think it is a currency. It is just a token issued by an individual. So crypto tokens and blockchain technology has been invented to remove the trust. The only people who will make money. Actually, in this instance, I'm reminded of my teacher in school. He always used to say, use the right word in the right place to give clarity for any information to be communicated. Now, currency which is loosely used to describe this new ex exchange medium needs to be replaced with the word token. That is why I am using the to word token. The only people who will make money in crypto token deals will be the miners and those who purchased or mined the tokens in the early stages. The Supreme Court has held the RBI uh, ring fence circular, which was sent to the bank, as not valid because there was no ban on crypto tokens by the government. That was the reason for the uh, Supreme Court declaring it invalid. And surprisingly, neither the government nor the RBI took steps to ban crypto tokens or file an, even file an appeal against the order. Between 2016 and 2020, RBI officials and the government have been talking a lot about crypto tokens and the infallibility of the blockchain technology. My personal view is none of them have an idea about what issues will arise if this is permitted to my mind the entire crypto token exercise is one gigantic ponzi scheme and the government has decided that it would be better to join the bad wagon than to ban it so now the government has also become part of the ponzi scheme in the recent past it has proved, been proved that blockchain technology is also vulnerable and several hacks have taken place. Which brings us to a more important question. What is this money that we are all talking about? Actually, in the last sentence that you, uh, Mr. Lokesh Babu was making, I promised to pay the bearer of this currency, RBI. Now, every currency is backed by a property which has got an intrinsic value. And that intrinsic value is represented by that currency. It may be gold, it may be silver, it may be anything. It may be the GDP of the country, it may be the credibility of the country, etc. Then what is the second attribute? It is acceptability by a large number of people. Equality in value to all. Credibility of the issuing authority. Sustainability of the value mobility of the currency uh, then uh, you have uh, the uh, you you have the retrieval of the value in case of loss of acceptability there should be a legal backing for the money there must be an ability for the property which underwrites the uh, currency to be universally met then there should be a transparent valuation and stability. Do crypto tokens have all these? I don't think so. Now, in this new uh, budget which was announced, nobody has told what will be the relation between the digital currency to the physical currency. Will they have the same value? Can they have the same value? Now, if digital rupee can be accepted as a consideration, then what, what, are, what are we talking about? Paytm? UPI, this one, uh, credit card, debit card, aren't they digital rupees? Why introduce another separate digital rupee for that? What will be the effect of reduced transaction and flow of money from regular banks to digital currency? Won't the bank bottom lines be affected? Are there international standards being set and there is a lack of clarity on the legal framework required to govern digital transaction? How does the government propose to tackle the possible frauds that may act? Now, 
the finance minister in a recent interview she said that uh, uh, people are making profits on uh, crypto uh, token trading therefore the government is entitled to tax it my first question to the uh, uh, finance minister is only this since you have said that everybody who makes a profit government can tax it so are you going to levy a tax on narcotic dealing are you going to uh, levy a tax on say smuggling are you going to give a gst number to the prostitutes and terrorists to do their business and collect gst on that when the finance minister has to measure her words when she's talking to the public if the finance minister catches a cold the stock market starts hyperventilating that is the strength of the finance minister and casually she says that asked about the legal status she said that there is a committee which is being consulted and as soon as they come out we will determine the legal status so without knowing what is the legal status you are going to uh, levy a tax 30% tax on that i don't know 45000 crores of indian uh, rupees has been invested in cryptocurrency by government servants politicians judicial officers lawyers business high net worth individuals and a lot of poor people also was the government aware of this if they were aware of this then why didn't they stop it in the first instance if they are not aware about who has invested how much in what then how do they propose to tax this transactions because uh, cryptocurrency by nature does not give uh, will not identify the transactors that is the person who is giving the currency or taking the currency it does not give the nature of the transaction it does not give uh, it gives only the value of the transaction now who is the government to tax if they don't have these details then there are several assets see if if are issuing digital uh, rupees uh, then what about physical rupees are they going to remove it now if blockchain technology is proposed to be used then uh, if it is disrupted who is going to be responsible for the losses and please don't listen to any panelist who says that uh, blockchain technology cannot be cracked just for your information i'll give you for this last 10 days there is a single hacker one individual sitting in us who has uh, who is playing footy with the internet in north korea switching it on switching it off so if a single individual can do all that just think about what an army of hackers who are placed in china and pakistan can do to our digital currency no matter what blockchain you are going to use is our cyber security secure that secure enough we don't have the infrastructure we have not started uh, manufacturing the semiconductors we don't have the operating systems we are still dependent upon others for servers and incidentally most of the data in this blockchain uh, crypto token uh, servers are stored outside the country how are you going to take it back now suppose by some way the government is able to intervene and get some details about the uh, uh, cryptocurrency uh, crypto token traders etc won't that be a violation of the data protection act which they are going to introduce because financial transactions are critical as per the government definition how are they going to break it how will the servers give them the information with such a democratic sword hanging upon them now uh they have government has permitted trading in crypto tokens without specifying which agency will oversee the working of the traders there is some talk about sebi doing it or rbi doing it or somebody else doing secondly there is no regulations which have been done ignorance of law is no excuse as mr rajendran often says ignorance of absence of law is it an excuse will it be an excuse and I don't know. I don't know where we are heading. I don't know why we are even having a discussion on crypto tokens 
without any law, without any regulation, still everybody is talking as a crypto. This thing is the thing of the future. To me, it is just a giant Ponzi scam. Over to you, Mr. Rajendran. You are muted, I think. Ah, oh, okay, he's unmuted. Okay, okay. Yeah, Dr. Reddy. Okay. Now, uh, thank you, Ravi, for a very outspoken presentation. Very nice to hear you there on these points. Now, uh, in another 10 to 15 minutes, we, we have uh, some discussion with yourself as well as Logesh Babu. I would like to ask Logesh Babu just about a couple of questions. Logesh Babu, are you there? Yes, sir. I'm there, sir. Okay. Now, we often speak about the settings in the mobile that my financial data, everything is stored. Cryptocurrency by itself is so opaque. Nothing transparent about it. Even if I have some vulnerability in my mobile, if the bank has some vulnerability, if the government has vulnerability, if the, uh, if the exchange has a vulnerability, it's going to be much more riskier in the case of cryptocurrency compared to the other currency, other legitimate currencies uh, like Indian rupee are used there or, or any other kind of trade. In this circumstance, how can we ensure that uh, my mobile data, the data in my mobile, is not hacked and whatever is the financial data which I am doing there is not hacked, is not stolen to somebody? And in case of any data loss, do I have any technological or legal redress available? Yeah, look. Okay. <coughs> Thank you, sir. So the first thing is, Cryptocurrencies are de decentralized as well known to everyone. The transaction takes taken place only with the help of the app and the exchanges. The exchanges are depending upon the app. The app is depending upon the uh, uh, operating system of the mobile or the system or the laptop, whatever the thing is that. See, hackers do not hack directly to the blockchain technology or directly to the virtual currencies. They come and sit in your device to hack all the content of the device. It might be the cryptocurrencies also. Cryptocurrencies can also be hacked, point number one. The thing is, how does the cryptocurrency transaction takes place? With two keys like public and private keys. Public and private keys are stored in the app itself. So to get ourselves secured, the primary way of getting secured will be, do not store your private key on the app. If you are really a user of the cryptocurrency user and you have a crypto cryptocurrency, would be have your private key, not on, not to have the private key on your app or the device. That will be most secured one to safeguard your uh, cryptocurrency wallet, which is available in the mobile. Point number one: there is no particular redressal for. Uh, recovering the money if it is being lost or if it is being hacked or if it is being stolen by the hackers or uh, data thieves. The thing is that is not controlled or that is not regulated by any specific body where the, in, in fact we do not have any customer service for the cryptocurrency wallets to ask what, what exactly the money has been transacted, the money who has been transacted, nothing can be done. It is your own safety to keep the money on your own safety issues. So I advise not to keep the private keys and public key for public keys that has to be kept in the wallet only do not keep your private keys there try to make a note of the private key in a particular note or a paper or to keep it in safe as the old traditional one that is the best way to do yes thank you thank you Lokesh babu my next question will be to Ravi in fact yes. myself Ravi, and there are quite a few others in the design digital security association uh somehow we are emotionally attached to uh the country is national interest national concern or uh, not that we are occupied or we want to occupy any political post or any national post or anything like that but whenever something happens which will be to the detriment of the nation we, we feel highly agitated we feel highly bad we always uh, support the view that uh, there is no uh, freedom of expression at the cost of national security this is not my view this is the view which has been expressed by supreme court in so many judgments Supreme Court itself, upper court itself has said in many judgments that uh, the freedom of expression or the privacy or whatever is always uh, um, not superior to the national security concern. That is, the freedom of expression is always subject to reasonable restrictions. One of the biggest reasonable restrictions being the national security. 
in this milieu i would like to uh, uh, request ravi to throw some light throw like just for a uh, for a minute or two the cryptocurrency everyone is afraid i am very much afraid if increased uh, in a larger perspective will destabilize the economy and the financial structure of the nation ravi do you feel that the powers that be or the officers in the government or judiciary or legal fraternity or anybody who is supporting the digital currency are not aware of this fear uh, i i doubt it because there is a vested there is a conflict of interest running along like i told you earlier even government officials have invested in cryptocurrencies crypto tokens not currencies even government officers have invested in crypto tokens yes, sir, now not call crypto currency because it is not a currency you are absolutely right it is not a currency it, it is not, not a currency. currency which comes under the purview of rbi act rbi act section 22 and 43 45 they speak about currency cryptocurrency is not a currency the word itself is misleading misnomer yeah ravi so i am deliberately using the word token crypto yeah. tokens when right. government officials court officials have invested in crypto tokens and some of them have lost money also my attention to this was drawn because the police were not able to register an fir so where is the question of uh, yes economic loss when you are talking about economic loss 45000 crores has gone out of this country outside india in terms of uh, crypto tokens 45000 crores is not a small amount even at the peak when black money was stashed in switzerland it was only about 1000 1500 crores today we are talking about 4500 crores 45000 crores and more and more money is going out because online gambling they are asking for money on crypto, uh, crypto tokens so where is the question where the economic impact now there is another issue also the prime minister says everybody has to have a bank account 40% of the indian population and that includes me also we are all computer illiterates how do you expect us to operate a digital currency when we are not even able to operate our uh, atm pin cards which means 40% of the indian population will go out of the banking system is that okay is that okay for the government when they talk about digital currency is that okay for the government then only when you have 100% literacy you can talk about digital currency digital crypto tokens whatever you want you can call it but without that today how many frauds on your uh, atm cards and uh, credit cards debit cards paytm upi how many frauds are being reported by the banks very few very few the fraud uh, amounts run in excess of 3 to 5000 crores and the customer is made to pay for us banks don't take any responsibility thank you thank you thank you mr ravi in fact uh, one viewer has raised the issue of uh, a digital asset the word digital asset the asset itself is quite interesting the french minister has said the digital asset like cryptocurrency is going to be taxed at 30% plus 1% tds and all that i mean i'm not uh, going into the because we have already discussed it now the word digital asset has it been defined what i'm trying to tell you is that if i have a fixed deposit in a bank is it a digital asset or if you have a cryptocurrency balance which is not legally recognized is that a digital asset or if you have a transaction based on it some other financial transaction has come and nft and funds remittance has come based on the funds remittance somebody has done another transaction so initially 150000 is there as per the money multiplier uh, principle of uh, the m3 level of economics the same 50000 has taken 3 or 4 or 5 different shapes it has multiplied three four times now which one of these is a digital asset has the word digital asset been defined 
So the larger area of defining all these things have not been addressed. So the FM has, uh, Finance Minister has said that our legal team will go into the nitty gritty. So we hope that the clarity will emerge on the definition of digital asset before it comes uh, within the taxable net. This is what I personally believe. Some more clarity has to come. Uh, uh, Dr. Reddy or Lokesh Babu Ravi, do you have anything more on this particular point? On the definition of digital asset? Uh, I, I have a point. If there is no clarity on the legal status of the digital assets, if there is no clarity on the blockchain technology that is going to be used, if there is no clarity on the impact of on the economic conditions of India, why announce a policy and that to include it in a financial bill and present it to the parliament in the first instance? Without any clarity, why do you want to pass a legislation? So that is because people have started using the cryptocurrency widely. As we all know, that India's most populated country and many of us started using the regulation has to be implemented. So that is the reason the government has passed the bill for the first sitting as well. So, so for that because matter, they, they cannot, lot of they cannot, in Punjab are doing narcotics. So shall we legalize narcotics? Yes. No, 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 Ravi, no, Mr. Ravi. But yes. I would like to that, uh, disagree. That, that, agree with that, that particular point. Angle. The whole world is talking about cryptocurrency. Since government also thought that we should also be in the domain, we should do something. Perhaps finance minister will come out with more clarity in the days to come. The whole yes. world yes. talked yes. about yes. subprime crisis also. <laughs> the whole world talked about subprime loans also. And look at the mess that we are in now. <laughs> sir, that, that, is, that is true, sir. But this point is entirely different. See, we do not encourage nothing illegal. But we people started using it. We cannot regulate it. Other countries started using it. They are using it in a wide way. And the same thing has to be implemented here in India also. So there are some regulatory steps that has to be taken. So that is the primary step of the government that they have passed the first bill message. But still, that is not the satisfactory one. We need to more, uh, include more regulations on this particular topic to make it more legal. So we cannot... Yeah, have, we have, cannot have, please please do it. Please yes. do it. But yes. get some clarity and then do it. To the panelists, I have, yes. Yes. To the panelists, I have a simple question to the panelists. Viewers are asking, what is the rupee, the official rupee, or like a dollar what is that currency all about and why the right. need for the digital currency digital currency again what is this cryptocurrency they are asking why are you confusing us when we are already lost our revenue in the form of uh, uh, because of covid 19 and all what is the rupee official currency what is this digital currency and what is this cryptocurrency people would love to know and which is legal and which is not legal and why government without any discussion on the floor of parliament and uh, why all political parties without discussing on the floor of the assemblies and why both state and central governments and all political parties without allowing discussing village secretariat we call panchayats panchayat to district panchayats then district panchayat to state legislatures and then it should come to the parliament if any policy that to a changing policy economic changing policy game changer policy involving every citizen when that is Correct. being involved, why there is no discussion at all? Correct. Why this crypto? Why this crypto? Yes, exactly. They are so, asking because yes. Prime Minister promised 15 lakhs into the accounts of everyone. And after demonetization, <laughs> you have seen no reforms in uh, income tax or electoral reforms. It is just static there. And not only that, very opaque. What is disturbing is after this government came and including that earlier UPA government, all those NRIs who are trying to donate to political parties, now they have become opaque. From 1976, we don't have any account. No Indian can ask them. And not only that, you have seen electoral bonds, even no idea who is which company is trying to donate and how much. Is it not already black? Is it not you are allowing black money to come back into the political parties? And political parties, they represent us in the democracy. But how is that they are taking us for a ride, confusing me from my official currency, rupee. Then they are saying digital currency. We are already using UPI and all this bloody, I mean, not I'm trying to, bloody is I'm not taking it in wrong sense because out of heartburn, 
out of heart burn without info involving yes. me without giving me information you are trying to decide my fortune and my future exactly who has given you right that is what i am asking who has given you right are you going to help only paytms and these you digitalize everything so that you want to privatize as you are killing all public sector units and rbi and all the banking sector will go to private companies so that they will dictate terms should we be enslaved because every individual citizen has a right over the natural resources how do you look at this scenario why this confusion sir all three panelists please so you want me to can respond I to you yeah more legal aspects you have to each one yes the legal maybe on technical but side so that no. uh, the rajendral uh, one throw more light on the legal side rupees yeah, like rupees two up to the uh, 2000 or whatever that has been issued by rbi as part of the rbi act the powers invested upon rbi so rupees is a legal tender there is no doubt no discussion about it a cryptocurrency officially legally is not recognized so there is it's a, a certain effect of that certain effect of uh, now now digital currency is something which is slightly adding a, a twist to the present scenario uh, government calls it the rbi central digital currency means rbi itself is going to issue a digital currency so the larger question is for the printing of uh, currency notes whether it's 500 or 2000 or demonetizing demonetizing uh, and taking find in a different color and all that these are within the purview of rbi uh, and the financial powers of the finance ministry now digital currency is a slightly a new paradigm a new change in the present scenario we are yet to see what shape is going to take government says that the as part of the digital india the cryptocurrency is a new fancy people would like to trade upon it so we are into introducing our own digital currency in the opinion of myself as well as in the opinion of uh, experts like navi and many others in the country they said that the very absence of uh, a premium absence of volatility will deter the public to deal with the government digital currency share market people have a fancy deal with it because share market the amount increases and rises the, the power is volatile you invest today in about a few hours intraday and interday and all that you make profit in the case of government digital currency is going to have a fixed value then how do you expect to trade people may not like to trade in a government controlled digital uh, currency as much or even for the take of taking risk for the investment purpose as they would like to do it for a cryptocurrency so when in the days to come we have to get the answer for it yes, sir, why do you need a digital currency now why are you confusing ah. us you have a beam app and everything you don't have yes. operating systems you don't have as you said semiconductors and everything to store everything you are importing and when you are importing when you have your own physical currency you are able to survive but even physical currency see for dollar you know it has gone to 75 to 80 rupees when it becomes digital without knowledge of a common man how can you enslave common man's hard toil without and yeah. making him to yes, sir ravichandran see what dr reddy says is 100% correct i'll have to differ with mr rajendran here the cbdc or the digital rupee which the rbi is being authorized to issue will be in your wallet electronic wallet it will have the same value as your physical rupee what question dr reddy asked was eminently correct here where is the need for a digital currency when we have a physical currency yes there is a problem in printing there is a problem in counterfeiting there is a problem in distribution i agree to all that points but digital rupee is not the solution and you cannot trade on digital rupee the digital rupee or the fiat currency it is the fiat currency in a digital form rbi will be authorized to issue the rupee in a digital form that is a fiat currency and it is digital currency it is not a crypto token 
and it is not required at present when 40% of the Indians are not even able to write their own PIN number. How are they going to use digital currency? Uh, that, does that mean that digital currency is meant only for high net worth individuals or educated people? It is not meant for ordinary people like me. No, I have a suspicion. Uh, let me add to you, Ravi Chandranji. Are you slowly but surely making converting into cryptocurrency? That you tell us yes. very clearly. Yes, because, yes, that is the idea. Because now I am asking idea. through this channel, I am asking Honorable Prime Minister and uh, even the uh, Finance Minister and all the political parties, 2000 scam, counterfeit scam, is it real now? You come out and tell us after demonetization. The, the, you tell us the now. Problem, the, the problem is the government is trying to shift the physical rupee to the digital rupee for two, three reasons. Number one, it doesn't want people to save money and put it in banks and gain interest, which means banks are going to be hit very badly. The second point is the government wants people to spend the money. And the third point is the government wants to keep a track on what people spend and how much they spend, which means that will be under total government. This thing. The Personal Data Protection Act is also tailored in that manner. I, my book is elaborating on that, but that is different. But the final uh, count is we are slowly going into an Orwellian nightmare, like what Justice Krishna said, where Big Brother is always on the watch on whatever we do. That is the <laughs> primary aim of the government. Is it not infringement of my right to life and my right to living? And it my is. right? Is it, it not is. infringement? The second yes. aspect, black money, this government promised so much of black money got stashed away. Every account will have 15 lakhs if you try to bring that back into the country. What happened to that? You are, are you legalizing this black money? Because merging of banks without auditing it properly, without trying to go for non-performance of assets audit, you did not sell these non-performance assets till now. The same Reliance company's infrastructure is being owned by Geo Company. And that man, Anil Ambani, goes broke. But the same infrastructure gets again bank loans. And they go for public shares. And BSNL is being killed literally. Then why I'm trying to tell you is, do you want to privatize everything and you want to put all the country's wealth in the hands of two or three people? You tell us very clearly. Otherwise, where is the need? What did you? How much black money you brought? And what happened after demonetization? How many counterfeit roads has come back? Now, is it not a fact that 2000 scam was there? And the other day also, Mr. Rajendra, and we have discussed cryptocurrency, even Karnataka chief minister's name was held. What is that uh, inquiry? What is that inquiry, sir? Many politicians and were there involved. Did you go for any investigation into that? Without going into any investigation, how can a finance minister, how can a prime minister eulogize this uh, cryptocurrency? We are charging 30%. What is the source and means of cryptocurrency earnings? Mr. Sitaramanji, you have to tell the world. Is it because, is it narcotic money? Traders money? Track traders? Arm traders money? Which money is that crypto and who are they? And whom are you charging? Do you have any information? Come on, you reveal it on the floor of the parliament. Parliament means you are elected by people like us. You have responsibility to tell us. Without, by keeping us in dark, who has given you right? Is this a people participatory constitutional democracy or a few individuals trying to impose your will on us? It's a republic state. Every individual is a constitutional authority. Am I right or wrong, Mr. Ravi Chandranji, Lokesh Babuji, Rajendranji? What is this I happening? Agree with you. What is happening? How can you impose without identifying what is cryptocurrency and why do you need a digital currency? Did you tell the people of India? All of a sudden, you come. What is this fascination? You confuse people daily instead of letting us know what has happened after demonetization, how much black money has returned, how many counterfeit notes you could seize, and how it has helped us to grow economically, and what are the benefits out of that economical bargain. You have to clear us. Without doing, even for Corona, you have increased diesel and petrol charges because of which essential commodity charges went high. Middle class is not able to survive. You said you have invested that money for vaccines. Who asked you to invest in vaccines? 
no the same way digital currency i am not able to understand till now what is cryptocurrency when a karnataka chief minister's name is being circulated in the media and all politicians and big office still prove no one is guilty again i am trying to be very clear but when things have come out instead of this government being transparent how is that all of a sudden 30% tax for uh, cryptocurrency if, if you have any data you have to present to the parliament and to the people of india parliament means people of india you say on the other hand cryptocurrency you have not filed any appeal in the supreme court when supreme court found fault with rbi's direction till now everything is confusion but all of a sudden central government coming up with 30% tax on cryptocurrency and again another digital currency what is this we are not able to understand you kindly wind up by giving your experience in regards to law in dealing with cyber crimes law in dealing with economic offenses law in dealing with the hardcore basic finances which should be the legal tender of any country if some country is not following why the hell we should follow we don't have operating systems if they want to enslave you if two or three people in the world or we, we are being heard world economic forum all countries rich are there in that group if they want to control the entire population why should we fall into that group yes sir lokesh babu ji you can start yes sir say so from my point of view implementing cryptocurrency currently without creating an awareness in public is a wrong step so the government has to take necessary step of creating awareness within the public sector or the public to make them aware what exactly the crypto is that is from the government side whereas from the people the public side see we don't know what is cryptocurrency we don't know what is of crypto trying to uh, do all these actions and views trying to create things uh, cryptocurrencies for example some few years ago only the cryptocurrencies was not even hundreds of cryptocurrencies now, now it is more than 7000 cryptocurrencies and 4000 cryptocurrencies are actively getting participated all these things are the data which is been given by the coin cap market or any other cryptocurrency side that is that that other part but people go for cryptocurrency from my point of view out of their own envy they want to make more money to complete their survival so they do cryptocurrencies either the government to, should take proper step in controlling or banning this cryptocurrency within the boundary of indian within the boundary of india or they should be, create an awareness make them proper timing give them proper time public only then they should start uh, allowing the cryptocurrencies to be legal in indian in indian boundary that is my point of view how do you how do you take this 30% tax for cryptocurrency again digital currency that see once the cryptocurrencies is been implemented or is uh, being started by the rbi or the government of india some in some part and if they are trying to issue cryptocurrencies that will get purely monitored by the uh, uh, that will become a regulated or centralized authority within the indian uh, apex banking and only all the transactions what we do as uh, mr ravichandran said each and every transaction which is been done will be monitored by the government and they'll easily charge uh, 30% of the tax from us which will be very easy for them that should not happen not only that the people who have got large amount of money black money stashed away in the banks yes. do they, they they will try to they in cryptocurrency again this divide divide yes. between have and have nots yes. will increase socio economical yes. divide will go in such a way that entire country will plunge into chaos don't you think that such a scenario will yes 100 percent true without proper regulation if this is been implemented that then we'll end up in that way only Your Rajendra. point is accepted, Dr. Sir. Thank you, Rajesh Babu. Rajendra Ji, before I go to Ravi Chandran Ji, this chaos. Where is the need? Why do you need all this? Is it so because the there is some problem with two thousand two thousand rupee scam after demonetization, and then because some people are at higher levels are involved in this cryptocurrency? Is this the reason why the government panicking and doing all these things without debating and discussing? No, no. from my personal perspective i can tell you that i am not competent to talk about uh, whether i have a higher official say anybody else is involved or uh, what exactly the the, the shape uh, how no, the government is viewing it discussed, no, sir, what, is what is it from that uh, what is that scam purely from a legal 
Rajendra, it's Rikari scam or something we discussed last time in the Karnataka. Correct, correct. That is correct. Last time we discussed it. In fact, I am looking at a cryptocurrency. Uh, no, again, I am telling you that should be investigated. No, they came out with big names. Yeah, right. Absolutely. And Phil proved no one is guilty. Again, I am trying to tell Phil proved no one is guilty. That yeah, is the line. That is true. That is true. But that don't you true. think government but should be looking at it from respect. a technical legal perspective? From a legal perspective, what are the legal ramifications? I presented the facts. Now, from a, from a technology perspective, it is going to be an unregulated. So, cryptocurrency is bad for India. There is no doubt about it. I am only intrigued by the fact that uh, when the Supreme Court shut down the Satyavan, why the RBI and the ministry chose yes. not to go on in appeal? The they should be determined to cry to yes. hold from the rooftop. Said is that uh, a legitimate case filed by the thing should have been uh, why the Supreme Court has second this stand. We are convinced the issue is bad for the country. We have to go on in appeal. Like, this should have been the stand taken by the finance ministry or the RBI. They did not take the stand. I, I do not understand the reason for it. That is one. Number two, what is the need immediately for the uh, finance minister now uh, to give a picture as if the uh, uh, crypto token is being legitimized? The, the finance secretary, finance minister makes it very clear that we are not legally recognizing it. But the action taken by them gives an indirect legitimacy to it so in my opinion this is avoidable it should have been avoided yeah yeah i'll add one thing is it because now farmers have gone on a strike for one year that means the entire farming because 70 percent of india is still in farming is it you want to kill the spirit of this farmers grama swarajya you are trying to play hide and seek with the currency now to confuse people this is also big doubt emerging yes sir uh, now, there are two, three points that I want to take, uh, Dr. Reddy. First, investigation. I think, sir, okay. one or two minutes more, I think, Dr. Reddy. Yes, sir, two minutes, we'll be winding up, no? Yeah, yeah, so five minutes after Ravi Chandranji completes okay. his uh, present. Now, how do you investigate a crime when there is no law at all? How do you investigate a crime when you don't know whether it is a crime or not a crime? Like I said, Ignorance of absence of law is, should, is also a crime. Now, now at the end of the day, uh, uh, Mr. Rajendran was asking me, what is, are the police equipped to investigate this crime? And what should a person do if he gets cheated by a cryptocurrency trader or somebody like that? I told him there are three options. The first option is go to a tantric, and ask him to work, put a curse on the person who has cheated him. The second option is go on the social media and talk like an expert, advising people not to deal with cryptocurrency. And the third uh, option is keep quiet. Don't tell anybody that you have lost money. That is the best one. <laughs> that is the best one. What else can be done? Not only the best way, sir. No other go, they have to keep quiet only. Because yeah, they right. cannot report it anywhere. Since it is not being centralized. And regarding this 30% tax, let the government levy, levy 100% tax also. But the question is, the fundamental of blockchain technology is anonymity of the transactors. So who is the government going to tax? And how are they going to do it? Unless that person comes forward and says, okay, I made one crore on uh, uh, cryptocurrency, please have 30 lakhs. If you have that much, then we don't have, require an income tax law at all. These, these people are whistling in the dark. Uh, my thing is, uh, as Mr. Rajendran said, yes, the government, it was not required at this point. The point, the point that I'm trying to make is without any clarity on cryptocurrency or its nature or its impact on the economic conditions of the country or the utility of the crypto uh, tokens by the uh, masses of Indian masses, how can you announce a policy in parliament in conjunction with a finance bill? That is my limited question. Because even the uh, bureaucrats in the finance ministry in different interviews they have given different ideas there is no cogency in their thought itself how do they propose a policy like this the yes. finance minister talks one thing the niti ayog talks one thing 
the finance secretary talks one thing finance uh, joint secretary talk one thing yes they have created a mess i think let us just close this i think we can have it in series because there are many questions to be taken but we promise you all these panelists will come back to you very regularly purposefully because this show is very clear this channel is very clear no enmity against individual nor animosity against any party or organizations issue as per rule of law constitution invoking evidential act we are doing these shows in larger public interest because in a democracy political parties represent us mla legislative assembly mps to the parliament but such a big discussion policy shift if it is happening why governments political parties not taking people into confidence why there is no information to the people only the few selected you want to make them to become neo rich as has happened during corona pandemic now there is a big serious doubt after the successful farmers strike is this the way you are trying to confuse the 70% of the people who depend on pharmacy i mean farming announce cryptocurrency all of a sudden that is what you are, everyone is asking mr sitaraman what is cryptocurrency madam did you define it who is this 30% you are taxing where is that money coming from narcotics drug dealings arms dealings or any other illogical illegal activities who are they why are you all of a sudden announce 30% tax you are you said you are they are making profits who are they you have to answer the parliament who are those you said they are making profits the prime minister has to come out even all the political parties see how they are trying to go hand in glove people have doubt within all the political parties of india now during corona you have seen imposing mandates all political parties are one now when such a important policy all of a sudden cryptocurrency profits they are making who are those who are making profits from where is that money coming from then what happened after demonetization did you ever announce how many counterfeit notes how it has helped our economy how many welfare and developmental schemes you have done because of that is there any idea that we are hearing about 2000 rupees scam is it real then what about so many ruling party members or opposition party members names being heard in crypto currency scam that kiri scam or something from karnataka did you investigate that then what is this digital currency all of a sudden whom are you convincing confusing and trying to contradict that means you want to control as you want to give digital health that also we are opposing why should you one go for regular test if you don't if it doesn't have any symptoms or problems just go diagnose and you create to confusion or confuse him create fear psychosis as has been done during corona and get him into unnecessary medication lifelong he will become the same thing are you going to do with digital currency cryptocurrency after seeing farmer strike no one was fearing you is that the reason you want to control every citizen in the form of digital currency as and when you want you can control the digital currency so that as the fears raised by aims doctors if the entire currency is in your hands if that is being monitored no physical currency in your hand sit 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 means sit stand means stand that means infringement of fundamental rights is this what this government is doing all these political parties have become one because why this reason you have made all those investments nra investments into the political parties opaque no transparency now from 1976 no individual can ask for anything go rti petition and you will not get any details from which nri company has invested how much in any political party the same thing is with electoral bonds which company is investing how much it is investing no details can be had for the public how can this be now on the same lines after seeing farmers farmers strike and uh, fearing that there will be reprisal for because of corona mandates are you trying to impose this digital currency on india you don't have operating systems you don't have semiconductor chips which store the information everything is imported that means you are going to give the entire indians hard and fortune 
their economics to the manufacturers of operating systems and semiconductors just for the sake of few people who have economic or industrial collaboration with such companies this is a big big doubt without having proper discussion why are you rushing through mr sitaraman has to come out clean now who has those 30 50 30 uh, percent profits who have made in cryptocurrencies what is this case all about in karnataka regarding cryptocurrencies why you are not trying to be transparent and clear when it comes to political party donations from nris or from the local companies what happened to 2000 rupee note scam is it a scam or not after demonetization nothing you are trying to speak you are confusing when you okay. have rupee yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. We can. when you have rupee when you are saying our gdp is increasing we are becoming stronger you should have been very happy we should have traded in rupee our strength and physical money why if people should not have it and why we should not have fds or anything in the physical form in the banks how long this hide and seek and how good this is for indians that you make it clear you make us well informed truly informed then you discuss it on the floor of parliament and assemblies and then you should make panchayats right from village panchayats district panchayats they should discuss debate then they should circulate it to assemblies from assemblies it should come to parliament this is what people participatory constitutional democracy is all about when it comes to such important issues the important issue because every citizen is concerned with his hard earned money but if it is moving away like this in the digital form all of a sudden mayam gayab how can india citizens keep quiet thank you sir i only hope government will come out clean and we will have series thank of you. thank you thank you thanks for the opportunity and i should thank you thank you, thank you so much you took the pain and uh, dr lagesh lokesh babu ji and ravichandran ji wonderful to have you all any questions are there but rajendra ji you promise us next time we will limit it to one hour don't worry one hour maximum okay. one hour 15 minutes we can thank promise you, you. today it was introductory so we wanted right. people to understand so take care this will be re telecasted with a different headline now because after discussion we have got so many things leads so with that we will re telecast it to our citizens dr tspr to support dr tspr channel citizens dr tspr channel and environment people dr tspr channel to work in larger public interest so for all the indian subhanitra and shubharatri for the world over good morning good afternoon thank you sir thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you rogesh babu ji thank you sir